Emily girl, good thing you had that helmet on. We will be having a very, very different type of episode. What's good, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Tammy. This is Tammy Talks. Married at First Sight. This is season 17. We're in Denver. Episode 16, Rocky Retreat. Welcome. Welcome back, y'all. I know that the recap is late, but as I told you guys, I was traveling last week for work. So here we are on Sunday. All right. First things first, if you're brand new to the channel or a returning uh, viewer that is not yet subscribed, I hope that this is the video that convinces you to go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Um, yeah, go ahead, join the party if you've been watching all that good kind of stuff. If you enjoy anything about this video, leave some comments down below. Let's talk about it. And at the very least, if you don't do anything else, thumbs up the video. Okay, y'all? Um, once again, um, this upcoming week, that recap is going to probably be Sunday as well because I have to travel again for work. I'm leaving out Tuesday morning. So just... FYI, um, the episode's gonna be late again. But let's talk about this, y'all. So, uh, but uh, but let's uh, the way I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna go Chloe and Michael and package all their stuff up first. Then I'm gonna go chronological order with how things went for the rest of the couples. Okay. So Chloe and Michael, they're waking up. It is day four, day four of the honeymoon. Okay, so. They're waking up. They talk about the conversation from the night before, which is where she said that, you know, she don't know if she can, she doesn't know if she can do this. So she feels that, you know, that was therapeutic. And, you know, Michael feels that it, it gave some insight to how she's doing and all this type of stuff. She don't like him. Okay. I don't think that Chloe likes Michael. I think that Michael is too much for Chloe. I think that Michael is a little too eccentric for her. And I think as a result of that, this is becoming stressful for her, but she wants to go along to get along. Okay. So he's, she said that it was a very good cry. He said all the right things. She thought it was going to turn into an argument, but it didn't. Um, Michael, if you're watching this, do you purposely cut your eyebrow? Cause it, every time I get, look at him, it's giving three cuts in your eyebrow trying to wild out. Okay. Word to Jay-Z. I remember in, um, so I went to a small, like private elementary, middle, yeah, elementary and middle school. And I remember there were some guys in my class that used to purposely cut their eyebrow. My best friend that I had during elementary school, she used to cut her eyebrow too. So is Michael cutting that eyebrow? I think it's a little too thick if he is. Just, just, just coming from me, okay? So they get to their shared apartment. They awkwardly decide on the sink space. They have double sinks. And he's like, I don't know which side to give you. You know, which side do you want? Is she looking like shit, nigga? I don't care. Whichever side. He said based on their, <coughs> excuse me, I have a code. Not a code. I have a, you know, when you change climates and it's, 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 I'm back in cold Milwaukee. Okay. And my body was like, oh, okay. Code. So excuse my voice. It's not voicing the way that it should, but we going to work it out. So they're deciding over the sink space and he's like, you have a more, um, probably a, a bigger, more meticulous, uh, what's that called? facial routine, whereas he does not, and that would expl ex explain the, the skin, okay, Michael? You might need to add a couple more products to it. You might need to add a couple more products to the face regimen, okay? They then go to the closet space. Um, he clearly wants the bigger closet. She pegs herself as a minimalist, so she realistically should be okay with the smaller closet, but she's like, you know what? You gave me the bigger sink bigger side of the sink you can have um the bigger closet and he's like it's small but it's like you know I'll make it do what it do and it's like Michael so uh, the next morning he wakes her up with coffee 
And he's like, it's trash, it's probably garbage, it's trash, probably garbage. One thing that I don't like when anybody does is, one thing, and I never do, right? If I do something for somebody and I'm doing it to surprise them or make them feel good or, you know, just to be thoughtful, I'm never going to be like, I'm never going to put a disclaimer on it. I'm never going to say, oh my God, I cooked you, I don't know, this steak. I hope it's to your liking. You know, I didn't do this right. I didn't have this seasoning, this spice. I never do that because I feel like you're setting that person up to where they feel like they have to like it. You know what I mean? Now, if he gives her the coffee and after she takes a couple of sips, she's like, ooh, this is strong. Then you can be, or, ooh, I'm, I'm, wow, this is bitter. Then he can say, you know what, I never made coffee before, so I'm sorry if it's bad. You can do it that way, but I don't like when people come into something with a disclaimer like that. You know, what I, if that makes sense. So she's like, it's the thought that counts, which it always is. It is almost always the thought that counts. I am a coffee drinker. I have coffee right now. If somebody makes me coffee or brings me coffee and it's not the best, it's the thought that counts. You thought about me to make this coffee for me and bring it to me, something that's like out of your norm. So she apparently went to sleep at 745 because she was overwhelmed and tired. Now, we saw earlier she was saying how after a trip, she likes to go home and just decompress in her space. She couldn't do that because, you know, she's sitting here with Michael. So because she's not able to do that, it you know, she was like, oh, we have to decompress together. We're going to have to just decompress together. And you can tell that she did not want to decompress with him and that it was she's overwhelmed she's overwhelmed by everything so she went to sleep at 7 45 he was like you barely beat the sun meaning girl you went to sleep before the sun went down but he allowed her that time and that's fine she's saying in her confessional that michael or i'm sorry that there could not have been a better match for her than michael i can't tell if chloe is sincere or not There are sometimes she says things or she makes a face or she makes a look. And I'm like, Chloe does not like this man. But then there are other times where it appears that she does like him. She's very hard to read. I still think she's coming off kind of performative. Some of you guys say you don't think that she is. But so I I don't know how to read her, y'all. I really don't. So they get to Chloe's apartment, you know, we're still doing like the beginning season stuff. So it's kind of, it drags because we're past this part, but let's talk about it anyways. So her apartment looks nice. She has um, her grandfather's trunk from World War II and she's like had it refinished and she repainted it and it looks really nice as like a cocktail table. So she has that going on. Her space is decorated very nicely. looks very sophisticated. He was like, oh, I thought you were a minimalist. You have things. You have throw pillows. You have this. And I, I, whenever people say they're minimalist, I don't take it super literally. So I, he said he expected her apartment to be sterile. That doesn't always make you a minimalist, right? She could just be a minimalist in the sense that before she buys a new pair of shoes, she gets rid of a pair of shoes. You know what I mean? Before she buys a new pillow to put in, you know, a sitting chair, she might get rid of a pillow that she already had. So she could just be a minimalist in that aspect. But who knows? But her place looks nice. Um... Her closet, I felt like, looked just like his. She was making it seem as if she only had a handful of clothes. Like, your closet was full, girl. So, okay. We then have to watch her awkwardly awkwardly put this duvet cover on her duvet. And this was a mess. This stressed me out. I have a duvet, right? I don't have my cover on right now, but I have a duvet cover. And I always buy a king size. I have a queen size bed. I always buy a king size duvet 
because I like to... I like the way it looks better when it's draped across the sides. The way that she got her body up inside of that duvet to put that cover on was unnecessary. That wasn't necessary, sis. I have never in my life done that. Nonetheless, while she was doing that, he said that he was turned on by it. And then he turns and sees her pearl necklace. He turns and sees her pearl necklace and was like, oh my God, can I try this on? Here's my stance with this, right? Pearls have always been thought to be like a a woman's um, accessory, right? I have pearls. Um, I have fake pearls, you know, and then I have real pearls that have been handed down to me from my grandmother, from my grandmother's grandmother. She got them. My mom now has them, and I have a set as well. So I have real pearls that I'll bring out for, like, an event that calls for real pearls. And then I also got, you know, my my little, my uh, faux pearls that I got from, I think I got it from Kohl's or something. Was it Kohl's? Probably Kohl's because they still take it. So it can't be nowhere lower than that. And I just kind of feel like I don't like that men are wearing pearls now. I just don't. And I know it's popular and it's trendy and you see a lot of men wearing pearls now. Um, I, I don't necessarily like it, but like it's not a deterrent for me because they're usually small and very tasteful. But the fact that Michael put on them big ass pearls she had, for one, I didn't like the necklace in general, okay? But for him to put that on, it had a big ass pearl that was just... Everything about that scene was like, ah. now I'm a person, I like Michael's style, right? Michael is eclectic. Michael is himself. I like the fact that Michael is comfortable within his own skin to wear whatever it is the hell that he wants to wear. Now, are there certain things that Michael likes to wear that I like don't agree with? Absolutely. I'm not a fan of him wearing them skirts, okay? But I think some of the other stuff that he wears, it doesn't bother me. But I think Michael has to learn to read the room too. Nothing about Claire should give you the inkling, the inclination, right? That she would be okay with sharing jewelry with you. It's not like it was, you know, like a, a little bracelet like this. You know what I mean? Or something like this. Or like, this is my dad's bracelet that he gave me some years ago go bracelet and he gave my brother the necklace right so this is something even though this is clearly a man's uh bracelet this is this is different it would be very different if it's something like this but the way that he wants to wear her big ass i just michael you gotta read the room babe you have to read the room so um you can tell that she's not that into it she looked turned off by the fact that he not only wanted to put them on, but that he did. And then said that he was going to start tapping into her accessories. Um, she said in the, in the confessional that she's not into men that typically, she's typically not into men that lean into their feminine side. This is a lot for her. Michael is a lot. And I just think that Michael has to not change himself, but tone back a little. You just met this lady. You can't be asking to borrow her, her pearl necklace, right? So we, um, we are at, oh, I skipped over. Okay. My bad, y'all. My notes got messed up. We get to Michael's apartment. So his cat looks mean as fuck. I don't like, I'm not a cat person, but the way that his cat was looking, I said he got one of the mean looking cats, but he seemed very well mannered. He just sat there. Um, Michael's closet didn't look bad to me. I mean, is it super, super organized? No, but it also wasn't messy. Things, everything had a place. There were boxes and stuff. She was making it seem as if, oh my God, there's so much stuff. And I'm like, girl, his closet don't look no worse than yours did. Both y'all closets are busting at the seams. So Michael starts pulling out things that he likes to wear, I guess. And he was like, you like wearing my clothes. So... 
I have more things that I want you to wear. And I thought that was weird, personally. But he pulls out this, like, pink bomber coat. And the coat was cute. And so she, like, puts it on. It's a cute little coat. But let's be real. Women, we are always wearing our boyfriend's, like, hoodies and T-shirts and, you know, flannel shirts. We're always wearing their stuff. So that is not, like, over-the-top hard to believe. But then Michael starts pulling out some skirts. Were they were they actual skirts or were they like kilts? Nonetheless, she called it a skirt and she he put out the one and he was like has a flap in the front, flap in the back. And I was like, is it a kilt? Was it a skirt? What was he putting? But he had multiple and she was like oh there's more than one and then she kept saying to his cat like oh you're or his dog oh your daddy likes to wear skirts your daddy likes to wear skirts michael thinks she's accepting of what he likes to wear i think she's more tolerant is what i'll say pastor cal comes over um michael asks what before pastor cal comes michael asks her when can he borrow her earrings i said oh michael um <laughs> he just wants one though not both he just wants one uh then we have pastor cal comes in chloe doesn't know if two years ago she would have been in the mental physical or emotional space to marry a stranger but she is now and it becomes not only a stranger but a stranger like michael so pastor cal is like you know, Michael is different, has his own style, whatever the case. How are you with that? And she mentions that a man that leans so heavily into his feminine side is new to her and will take some time for her to get used to. Pastor Cal is then like, well, you know, you just got to let him know if you don't want to share your earrings, whatever, whatever, you have to be open to talk to him about that. How is that like going for you? So what that tells me is that Pastor Cal kind of knew that they were on two opposite, very opposite ends of a spectrum, right? And... <sighs> Like I said before, I don't have a problem with what Michael wants to wear or what he likes to do or any of that type of stuff. Everybody has their own style. But when Chloe is referring to Michael leaning into his feminine side, I think she's more so referring to aesthetics, how he chooses to wear his hair, how he chooses to dress, like that type of stuff. Pastor Cal took it to mean the fact that he's more sensitive and... Uh, vulnerable when speaking and that's they're on two different wavelengths right so it'll be interesting to see how that goes with Chloe and Michael because I don't think she has an issue with the fact that he's a very sensitive man that communicates well she has an issue with the fact that he wears skirts and pearls and dangly earrings I think that is her issue um, she said that even though he's not a man that she would have picked for herself, she asked for a man with the heart of gold, and that is what Michael is. So she's willing to give this her best shot. Kudos to her. So Becca in Austin. All right. So now we are. Let's get to the rest of the. Let's get to the actual show. So Becca in Austin. So they are both packing a speaker. Why? That conversation irritated me. If she told you she packed a speaker, why would you still pack yours? So Austin thinks they should work on the stuff that Dr. Pia told them to. He's like, we should make out a lot. White people, why y'all call it make out? If I got some, I know I have some white viewers. Why do y'all call it make out? Hmm. Let's make out a lot. I just, okay. Um, Becca thinks they gonna have sex. Girl, y'all not. And you know y'all not. But if you want to get your hopes up and get your feelings hurt, go for it. So in the car on the way there, Austin X tells her that he's excited to hear all about Michael and Chloe's honeymoon and how things are going. And he's like, what are you most excited for, Becca? And she was like, to fuck. And I said, oh, girl, if you don't go and finger pop yourself off so you can tone down your homework, your homework a little bit. This man is not sleeping with you. He's not. 
Get over it. I'm at the point now that Becca's getting on my fucking nerves. He don't want to sleep with you, sis. Where is your fucking shame? Where is it? Where is the self-esteem that you need? Go get yourself off and leave Austin alone. Jesus. So then we see Claire. Lost my shit. Claire is heading to the couple's retreat. Somebody on Twitter... I think in my comments too, said that Claire is living the life that Alyssa wants, being able to still live in the shared apartment, still go to all the activities, still hang out with everybody. Alyssa is watching this show seething, okay? Emily and Brennan, she says she's feeling blah on him. She's ready to focus less on him, more on everyone just being all together. Brennan's like, we're going to make core memories, uh, I guess. I guess. He never makes eye contact with her. Anytime she's talking, he's, like, sure to, like, just look off into space. In the car, she calls Michael Orion. They're painful to watch. Very, very painful to watch. We get to the house. Austin is excited that, like, apparently that's an NFL player's house. They don't say the name. They bleeped it out. And Becca's like, oh, I wish I cared. And I was like, that's rude. And I'm glad that Austin says something. Thanks for being excited for me. So then she's in the confessional, a football player, touchdown, offense. And it's like, if you would get sex off your fucking mind, then maybe you could start to connect with him a little bit more in other ways. If anything bothers me, it is when somebody is genuinely excited about something and they tell somebody else and that person is just like, oh, Yay. Like, I just, I didn't understand her whatever in that scene. It was, uh, I don't think I like you, Becca. I don't think I do. So, Brennan and Emily show up, and Brennan is like, you cool with separate rooms? Boom. That's it. I said, because y'all ain't sleeping together at the house anyways. So, of course, we're not going to put on airs now. Orion and his raggedy ass truck showed up with a six pack of beer. How tacky. It's gonna be more than six fucking people there. Which are sharing a beer. Talk about some he's excited to talk to Lauren and build a bridge. Build a bridge to hell. That's what you can do, Orion. Build a bridge, drive your ass off the cliff. I am so sick of Orion. Claire and her patchwork jeans show up. Claire, now, girl, I, I don't get on pee how people dress because, I let, you know, I let people dress how they want to, okay? I'm black all day, every day. Happy Black History Month. But I let people dress however they want to. I've had people ask me, oh, my God, you keep wearing the same hoodies. I'm at home. <laughs> I have a bunch of essentials clothing. I'm at home. Y'all going to get whatever it is that I have on when I watch that show. I don't go and get dressed to do these videos. So, because I don't be dressed on here, right? I don't talk about people's outfits. But, <laughs> Claire's jeans look like they were straight from the Rue 21. <laughs> they looked horrific. Oh, my God. That was a terrible pant. But she shows up. And I'm sick of seeing her talk about she feels bad for having fun while Cameron is is recovering. What in the survivor's remorse is going on with her? She acting like Cameron just had like a brain implant or some shit. Like this nigga had a heart. I didn't mean to call him that. <laughs> Cause I'm getting irritated. This man had, okay, Cameron had a heart procedure that was outpatient, right? I explained to y'all, I will be having the same procedure this summer, whenever I schedule it. You know why I can schedule it whenever? Because it's not a life-threatening situation, okay? I am sick of her acting as if, this man is laid up in the coma because she fell asleep at the wheel and they crashed or something. Whatever he has going on literally has nothing to do with you, sis. On top of the fact, I don't think Cameron gives a good goddamn what any of y'all do in that house. I don't. There's a reason Cameron is not being filmed. And I do not think it's because he's recovering. I think it's because he doesn't care. 
And once you stop caring, you will be in a better headspace too. Lauren shows up. Uh, says she hasn't spoken to Orion since the wedding. Um, she said that Orion said he wanted to be friends, but she's disappointed in his lack of effort. Now, y'all said that um, Lauren said on... Ouch. Y'all said that Lauren said on the... I almost called it a halftime show. That Lauren said on the... What is that called? After party that... Uh, they all went out afterwards and Orion was acting kind of standoffish, didn't talk to her, whatever the case. Uh, uh, Lauren wants to be that man's friend. Right? She does. I think that Lauren wants to be friends with him. I think that Lauren wants to have some type of relationship with him because why do you care? Why are you disappointed in his lack of effort unless you too want to be friends with him? Why do you want to be friends with him? I think that's what I want to get to the bottom of. Why, like, what do you want from him? What is the purpose? Y'all decided to, to separate. Y'all should be able to be in a room and in a space with each other and it not matter. It shouldn't be a big deal to y'all. I don't know. Maybe I'm just built a little differently, but I don't see why this is such an issue for Lauren personally. So we get to dinner. Emily said that she booked ATVs just for her and Brennan. Brennan's whole face job. He does not want to go on a solo excursion with her. Lauren said that she came in the spirit of healing. Um, she didn't want to come at first because, you know, couple couples retreats, couple trips are really designed for couples to bond and get together and connect and learn from other couples that are on the same journey as them. None of these people are on the same journey in this house. So what was the purpose of her coming? Um, she said, but then she thought about it. She came so that she can zen out and stay grounded. She said a really good past month, and she wants it to stay that way. Clara said, I think it's cool that both you and Orion are there. Lauren said, I came for you. She is not even making eye contact with Orion. She has angled her body away from him because he's at the head of the table right here. She has angled her body away from him. She's not even acknowledging him. Orion oh, head ass. What is going on with your eye? Out here giving everybody the pink eye. Why are you here with this ailment? So he shows up or he's there and he's like, I'm proud of where we both are. Then says that he wants to try to, you know, switch up the narrative for them and maybe have a conversation with Lauren. Lauren and her confessional feels that Orion brings up things in the group setting to be performative, to make himself look good. I agree. Don't you need to be going back on to your family and to your culture and everybody that um, knows you and apologizing for what Lauren said? Ain't that said that's what you had to do? You had to have the whole weight of your people on your back. You should be trekking your ass through the world, apologizing to them one by one because of what happened with you and Lauren. That's what you said you had to do. Get started. Get started. So later that night, everybody's going to bed. Um, Austin and Becca, I guess she's trying to get freaky, trying to get a little frisky. So they get in the bed. She thinks she's going to do some necking. So she's like, I have to lay on your chest. And we see an hour later, Austin hopped on out of bed and said that he was going to go sleep in the big bedroom and she could come if she wanted to. So, I, I, what do y'all think is really going on? I know Austin kept making a point to say that the room that they would be in would be secluded away from everybody else. Nobody could hear them. Do y'all think he just does not want to sleep with her because he's worried that the cameras might pick it up? Like, what is the issue? It's, I don't know. I don't know. So nonetheless, you know, he goes into the next bedroom and she said her little feelings were hurt. She don't know what happened. I guess she didn't follow him. The next morning, we see Lauren and Claire out playing basketball. Well, holding a basketball. Claire says she now realizes and accepts that Cameron does not want to be bothered with her or lean on her the way that she thought he would. Girl, why did it take this long? Why did it take this long to get there, Claire? 
She also said that there's weird energy whenever Orion talks to the group about the two of them. Lawrence is now no longer no longer interested in a friendship with Orion. She doesn't feel like there's anything to gain from it. Girl, you was just disappointed yesterday. We got to get to these these realizations a lot a lot quicker, sisters. We have to. We have to. We then have Austin and Becca. So apparently he apologized for sleeping in a separate room and now she's cool. They're getting a couple's massage. Um, they're in this sauna getting beat with leaves and shit. Then they have like a cold water dunk. Then they get into a cold water pool. It's a lot going on. But they talk after that and he thinks that they are working on things and getting better. We're not getting better if you still run in from her sexually, right? We're not getting better if every time y'all get to the brink of something, you get out of bed and run away. What are y'all getting better at? Uh, we then get Austin and Brennan. No, Emily and Brennan. Finally, they're out ATV. Emily somehow lost control. She goes off the road. Think she hit her head on the on a rock, probably, and she is bleeding, bleeding like shit. Okay, like the way blood was gushing out, Brennan runs back and he like has something, probably a, a bandana or whatever, you know, got to apply pressure to stop it from gushing. I hollered the way that cameraman was just walking casually back. We saw that man in that orange coat come running back like, oh shit, like yeah, shit just got real. 911 came, a whole mess. And you can tell Emily's visibly scared. I wonder... If, well, we know that she was in like a state of shock because she kept asking, am I okay? Am I okay? Um, Brennan offered no words of affirmation aside from you're okay, but that thumb did start moving. I said, look at there. He got a feeling or two. He did that thumb, but like it wasn't any like constant, you're okay. I got you. It was just like, you're fine. And then he just stared at her. But they hightailed that ass to the hospital. I hope, well, we know she's okay because she's been on the after show, but who child. That kind of had my nerves bad, but then I was like, we know she's okay, so. But let me know what you guys thought about this episode. Um, thumbs up the video, subscribe to the channel. Don't forget, Love is Blind starts this week. My recaps will start on Saturday, and I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace.